So this upcoming game against the Chiefs and 49ers will be an intriguing one that could involve a breakout game from a very unexpected player for multiple reasons. And in today's video, I'll get into that. A player everyone's rooting for making his debut for the 49ers, the final injury report, and so much more as I preview this highly anticipated game. But first, how about those? <laughs> All right, look, this Sunday is the official Super Bowl 58 rematch between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers, but it's a rather meaningless game in comparison to a Super Bowl, a regular season non-conference matchup, NFC against AFC, with San Francisco probably needing the win more than the Chiefs as they sit at 3-3 three three at the moment, while the Chiefs head into the matchup 5-0. and Patrick Mahomes shared with the media this week that he always likes going up against the best, and that's what this team is, one of the best in the league, 500 record aside. Now, with the Chiefs on the road, just like the Super Bowl, the 49ers are currently favorites to win this game. However, it's not so simple here. For starters, Mahomes is 11-1-1 against the spread in his career as an underdog. He's also never lost to the 49ers since 2018, the Chiefs are 4-0. They won 38-27 in 2018, Mahomes' first year as a starter. Then in 2020, they won 31-20 in Super Bowl 54, a glorious W if I do say so myself. In 2022, KC then curb stomped San Fran 44-23 in the most recent matchup they won was uh, Super Bowl 58, winning by three, 25 to 22. On top of that, the Chiefs are coming off of a bye week. I mean, the 49ers have a mini bye after playing on Thursday Night Football, but the Chiefs get a full bye week. And after bye weeks, Andy Reid is 21 and four as a head coach, which is the best record of any head coach. So that combined with the fact that Big Red seems to have Shanahan's number probably means Casey should be favored to win, but it doesn't really matter. And before I dive into this matchup in much more detail, Let's look quickly at the 49ers game so far this season. They beat the Jets 32 to 19, big deal. Lost to the Vikings 23 to 17. Surprisingly, then lost to the Rams 24 to 27. Smoked the piss out of the Patriots, big deal. Lost to the Cardinals and most recently, they did beat the Seahawks by 12 on Thursday night football. Nothing super impressive here, all things considered. Uh, it's been a bit of an up and down season for these guys so far with the biggest loss for them being the fact that Christian McCaffrey has been out all season on injured reserve. On top of that, the running back who has been in his place, Jordan Mason, he suffered a AC joint sprain in that matchup against the Seahawks, and if he does play, Ian Rappaport says his status is up in the air. He will not be fully healthy out there on the field. Then, wide receiver Jawan Jennings is dealing with a hip issue, not practicing all week, and probably won't play. Don't hold me to that, but he's probably not going to play. And then Debo Samuel has been limited all week with a wrist issue. He's probably going to play, though. Jennings, the loss there with Jennings is a pretty big deal. He's the team's leading receiver right now, racking up just over 400 yards and three touchdowns. So if Jennings doesn't play, a definite loss for the team with Debo also probably not 100% himself, as well as running back Jordan Mason dealing with the shoulder. Well, let's talk about this for a moment, because even with those injuries, the 49ers will still be dangerous. Running back Isaac Garindo, he took over for Mason last week after his shoulder injury, and he still carried the ball 10 times for 99 yards. Yeah, that's basically 10 yards a carry average, which is pretty wild. So they will still be a threat in the run game, but thankfully the Chiefs have been incredible at stopping the run so far this season. They've allowed just 88.4 rushing yards per game, which is fifth best in the NFL. And in total, they've allowed opposing RB1s just 169 yards on 66 carries, which is only 2.6 yards per carry. On top of that, the longest rush the defense has given up to a running back this year is only 12 yards. So the goal of KC is to continue to do exactly that. Stop the run and limit explosive plays and that will put a bit more of a strain on the 49ers having to pass the ball uh, at an even greater frequency, which honestly they can do pretty well also. But we'll get to that in a second. Sticking with the run for a moment, Mike Dana. Defensive end Mike Dana is going to be the only Chiefs player ruled out for this game. He didn't practice at all this week with a pec injury that he sustained in the Week 5 win over the Saints. And that means Felix and Udike Uzama will definitely be seeing more playing time. Coach Spag said this week that this is a great opportunity for Felix who's getting better every week. Uh, I would rather have Dana in there, but FAU, it's your time to shine, so let's freaking go. Now, one thing the defense has struggled with this year is yards given up to tight ends. They've allowed 
400 yards, which is the worst in the NFL, though they have done a better job the last couple of weeks against tight ends. Still, the 49ers have George Kittle, who is fourth on the team in receiving yards behind Jennings, Ayuk, and Debo, but he leads the team with five touchdowns. San Fran's offense is not the same without CMC, but they still average 27 points per game, are second in yards per game and yards per play, fifth on third downs, and 13th in touchdowns per game. Their quote-unquote weakness, 25th in the red zone, which is pretty bad and pretty similar to the Chiefs, actually, though KC is definitely worse inside the 20. However, the Chiefs' defense is 10th best at stopping teams in the red zone and are top 10 in most defensive metrics. That's probably the biggest storyline here. Can Spags and company limit Kittle's production? Can McDuffie clamp down Debo or Ayuk? The answer is most likely yes. And then, when the 49ers' offense do get in the red zone, can they hold them to three rather than seven? Now, I do want to add that while the 49ers do have a couple of wideouts banged up, Jennings has officially been ruled out as of when I recorded this video later this afternoon, their first-round draft pick, Ricky Pearsall, is likely to make his NFL debut after spending the first six or so weeks on the NFI list. If you remember, he was shot in the chest, right side of the chest, after an attempted robbery in San Francisco, and somehow the bullet cleanly exited through his back without damaging any major organs. Well, Kyle Shanahan confirmed today that Pearsall will be active in this game, which is definitely helpful in some capacity, considering Jennings won't play. However, Grant Kahn, a beat reporter who covers the 49ers, tempers expectations on what to expect from Ricky, saying, quote, I'm guessing Pearsall will play 10 to 20 snaps and catch a pass or two against the Chiefs, but nothing more. Another storyline will be the Chiefs' defense and their ability to stop the momentum of Brock, Purdy. He's playing like one of the top quarterbacks in the league right now. Second in passing yards, tied for eighth in touchdowns with nine, has the highest depth of target among all quarterbacks, and also actually has the longest time to throw of any quarterback in the league, which is pretty wild. But insert Chris Jones and company here because they're going to need to get home and disrupt Purdy more times than not. Spags is going to also need to dial up the blitz as well. He does send extra pressure on 34% of passing downs, racking up nine sacks or helping his team rack up, he's not on the field, but helping his team rack up nine sacks when blitzing. And Purdy has been more mediocre against the blitz this season. Three touchdowns, three interceptions, and a sub-90 passer rating. Something else that's interesting to note about this Niners team is their special teams unit. I mean, with field goals, they've been okay, but outside of that, they have not really been great, giving up some game-winning plays or key moments in games via special teams, and they are also now on their third kicker, Anders Carlson, who could be up this week after the injury bug has hit their previous two kickers. So yeah, it's safe to say that both of these teams have been hampered by some key injuries. We know what most of the Chiefs are and are definitely not the same teams that faced each other in Super Bowl 58. And from here, I got to get to the opposite side of the field's matchup. That's Casey's offense against San Francisco's defense, as well as my score prediction. But before I get to the rest, I have my underdog pickums in for this upcoming game. Underdog is not only the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports, but they are offering up to $1,000 in bonus cash for new signups, as well as a free Aaron Rodgers pick to use on one of your pick them. So you can take the free pick and swap it out for one of these if you'd like, but I'm starting off with the higher on George Kittle's four and a half receptions. He's done that in back-to-back -back games and with Debo Samuel and Jawan Jennings both nursing injuries, Purdy may lean more heavily on Kittle in this game. Another guy he'll lean on is Brandon Ayuk, but I'm still going with the lower on his receiving yards because Trent McDuffie will clamp this man all the way down, but also because Ayuk has only had one game this season where he's caught more than 61 and a half receiving yards. Next up, I'm spamming the higher on Harrison Butker's 1.5 field goals. This guy has done this in every single game so far this season, with the only exception being against the Chargers, where he went one for two on field goals after missing that 65 yard attempt. Then with the Chiefs running the ball more than ever this season, I have to go with Kareem Hunt getting more than 13 and a half rush attempts. He's done that in back-to-back -back games and just had 27 attempts last game. And finally, I'm hitting the higher on Trent McDuffie getting more than half of an assist. He's done that in four of five games this season, so that feels pretty safe to me. And with that, I put a quick 15 down to win up to 12.66x on my money. And again, whether you agree or disagree with these picks, you can sign up using promo code HBTC to build your own pickums for this weekend, and any new signups will get up to $1,000 in bonus cash, plus that free Aaron Rodgers 
first pick in the lobby. All right, the D line for the 49ers is way different than it was in the Super Bowl with only Nick Bosa being the same guy out there. Part of that reason is because Javon Hargrave is out for the season on IR with others now playing for different teams. With that being said, they have two other interior defensive linemen on the injury report this week, and if they play, are not going to be a full go. That's Malik Collins and Jordan Elliott, who are both dealing with knee issues, yet are both trending to play. Knowing all that, though, if I'm the Chiefs, this is another run-heavy game. Use the very stout interior trio in the run game and feed the ball to Kareem Hunt, who just had 27 carries last week. The Chiefs' offense has shifted this year, clearly favoring the run Almost 50% of the time, it's like 48 point something percent, and that's something they haven't done since 2011. Now, speaking of running backs, Clyde edwards Lair is officially back and on the roster, although Andy didn't promise anything about him actually for sure playing in his presser with the media earlier this week. Andy said he's good to go and practice and is feeling great from a mental health standpoint. He didn't specify that it was Clyde's mental health feeling great, but that is the initial reason why Clyde was placed on the NFI list. So all in all, that is the best news here for Clyde. His mental health is in a much better place. But as far as his usage for this week's game and if he will even be active, that remains to be seen. Andy was noncommittal when asked if CEH will play, saying they will see how things go with him this week. Looking at everything from special teams, etc., etc., as far as a decision is concerned. Well, whether Clyde plays or not, I still think this is a feed Kareem Hunt game. One thing to watch out for, speaking of the O-line, and the run game is going to be the Chiefs' tackles. Jawan Taylor is tied for the fourth most penalties in the league and could be going up against Nick Bosa quite often, which is always hell. Bosa has racked up 35 pressures so far this season, with Leonard Floyd on the other side having 20 himself. And honestly, they're kind of interchangeable on which side they can play on. So good luck, whether it's against Jawan Taylor or Wanye Morris. Speaking of Wanye, he is set to start over Kingsley Suomatia again this week. He's going to have his freaking hands full, and that's why the run game is so key in this game for me. If you can continue to run the ball so successfully, like you have in pretty much every week prior, it's going to help keep the defense honest on uh, passing downs. Play action could play a role as well. And then it's going to hopefully bring the secondary down and allow Xavier Worthy to catch a freaking bomb for a touchdown. Let's go. I'm not going to bank on that, but the run game being successful is going to only do good things for the Chiefs and their passing game, which has struggled this season. Mahomes has thrown for six touchdowns and six interceptions. That's some definite inconsistency there coming from QB1. A lot of that has come from pressure being given up by the O-line. Trey Smith has actually given up the most pressures along the line with the tackles close behind. Another guy to watch out for on San Francisco's defense is going to be linebacker Fred Warner. This man is not only an absolute unit, but he has the best coverage grade per PFF on the entire roster. Also, former Chief legend Charvarius Ward, he's back from injury, going to be playing in this game, and so he will also be playing a role in their defense being just above average in passing yards allowed per game and trying to limit the Chiefs' Um, middle-of-the-road offense, and that's where we need Travis Kelsey to have an absolute day. Then, when he's getting doubled, I think other tight ends are going to need to step up, and that's why I have a suspicion, an inkling, a hope, I guess, something. I think Noah Gray will be one of these guys to stand out and make a few plays here or there in this game. And if you look to the Chiefs' wide receiver room, this is where it gets a little more dicey, especially when one of their main remaining pieces uh, has popped up on the injury report this week. And before I get to that, Mahomes did say earlier in the week that he still has extreme confidence in the wide receiver room, the guys that are out there on the football field, even with injuries to players like Rashi Rice and Hollywood Brown. He said they've been in big moments under the bright lights and they know what it takes to help win games. I mean, I admire his optimism and confidence, uh, but I personally am a wee bit nervous, especially because Juju Smith-Schuster popped up on Thursday's injury report being a limited participant with his hamstring being listed. And normally if you pop up midweek like that, it is not great news here. So if you had no Juju Smith-Schuster in this game, I mean, you've got Xavier Worthy, pretty good, right? But Justin Watson, he's all right in his role, in his niche role. Then Sky Moore and McCole Hardman. I mean, good God, I might as well go and suit up. But thankfully... 
it seems like Juju Smith-Schuster is going to play. He's listed as questionable, being limited Thursday and Friday, but Andy Reid made it seem like today he's going to be playing when asked about it during his presser. With uh, Juju being back in practice, you feel pretty good about um, him being able yeah, to I think, play? Yeah, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're going to listen to his question we'll just, just in case something comes up, but he, he did good today, so... We'll see how he does tomorrow, <laughs> right? But that's, uh, he was good today. So this doesn't seem like a serious hamstring issue unless it's a little bit of smokescreen from Andy Reid so the 49ers don't exactly know how to prep. But he did say that Juju had hamstring spasms will probably play. Well, thank God, because Juju is going to be a much-needed piece out there come Sunday. This is exactly why I think the Chiefs need to go out and trade for a wide receiver even if they sign MVS back to the roster, which, spoiler alert, is most likely to happen here sooner rather than later, but that's a conversation for another day. Okay, now while I did just downplay the wide receiver room a bit just a minute ago, I do think an underrated player has a chance to shine against the 49ers for a couple of reasons, with that player being McColl Hardman. For starters, the wide receiver room as a whole has to step up, and I think McColl has earned more trust from both Mahomes and the coaching staff than Sky Moore. So, McColl is probably going to get more looks, even if it's just some niche, gadgety, quick pass type of plays like last game against the Saints. This is the first game all season. McColl had any offensive stats recorded, but he caught four quick passes for 33 yards with a long of 15. Then, back in Super Bowl 58 against the Niners, Hardman did have three catches for 57 yards, including a 52-yarder deep downfield, as well as the game-winning touchdown in overtime. However, the momentum McColl just recently saw makes me think more of his performance against the Niners back in October of 2022, when he had four receptions for 32 yards and a touchdown, as well as two rushing attempts on jet sweeps for 28 yards and two more touchdowns. Yes, he scored three touchdowns against San Francisco a couple years ago. And while these teams are definitely not the same, it's been two years, Hardman has momentum heading into this game that could carry him to some additional offensive production this week. So don't sleep on McCole Hardman in this game on offense as well as special teams. I said earlier that the 49ers have struggled on special teams and uh, they have allowed the fourth highest kick return average and sixth highest punt return average per P. Mac Magruder of Chiefs Focus. So yeah, McCole Hardman is the team's kick returner, punt returner, and maybe this ends up being the McCole Hardman breakout game after all. All right, let's get back to the offense because we still need to talk about their biggest struggle so far this season. That's going to be the red zone woes. They are currently the fourth worst team in the red zone, scoring a touchdown just 38% of the time went down there. Mahomes was asked about this in his presser earlier this week. He's very aware of these issues and said there needs to be better execution inside the 20. He needs to trust himself to throw in tighter windows for one and take more calculated risks at times. However, as good as the defense is playing, he said he wants to walk away from there with some points rather than none at all, you know, because the defense is going to hold it down more times than not. He also mentioned that when they get to the red zone, teams are playing them quite a bit differently from a coverage standpoint compared to how they are playing other teams and what they are putting on tape. So it's definitely a big game of violent chess out there, but one the team hopefully improves on as time goes on this season and hopefully as soon as this Sunday. For what it's worth, San Francisco's defense is middle of the pack in most overall statistics, including 19th in the red zone. So the key of the game by far out of everything I said, the thing you need to watch the most is how well can the Chiefs defense hold up in the red zone against a 49ers offense who struggles to score down there compared to how well can the 49ers defense hold up in the red zone against a Chiefs offense who also really struggles to score down there? After all, seven is always greater than three. And with the game on the line, there's probably nobody I would trust more than Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid to get it figured out. And that's why I'm rolling with the Chiefs winning their fifth game in a row against a talented 49ers team by a score of... 24 to 21. Analysts are kind of all over the place with this game and their predictions. Half of them say the 49ers are going to win. The other half are picking the Chiefs to win. And almost all of them are picking it to be within one score either way. Obviously, it could very well go either way. And the 49ers not only probably need this win more, but might maybe even want it more after losing back-to-back -back Super Bowls to the Kansas City Chiefs. Don't get me wrong, the Chiefs definitely want to win this game. Every game matters in the regular season as it adds up to where your seeding could be by the end of it all, but they just have less at stake overall here. Regardless, I'm rolling with the Chiefs getting the dub on the road and moving to 6-0 and 
on the year. Make sure to let me know your score predictions in the comments down below. Then don't forget to check out Underdog for some pickums fun this weekend. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those? Yeah.